What's up guys, I'm Rich from Spray Black Studios and today we're going to take a look at a nice easy way to make some effective grimdark wasteland bases. When posting up some of the pictures of my Slanesh Demons project, I did get quite a few questions asking about the basin scheme that I'd used on them. This is a basin scheme that really isn't overly complicated. There's nothing in the way of real advanced techniques, but there is just a little bit of a reliance on a couple of products. This does, however, mean that it's fairly easy to replicate. And because of that, I'm gonna show you today exactly how I've done it. So first of all, we need a base. This is gonna be the base for my recently painted Keeper of Secrets. So it will give plenty of space to work with and to get some nice visual interest. To build up a little bit of depth on the base, I'm going to use some cork sheeting to form a rocky outcrop in the centre of the base. This will give the model a nice raised area to stand on, perfectly fitting for a centrepiece mini. This cork sheet is very easy to work with as because it is lovely and soft, it can be torn by hand pretty easily. It is quite thin however, so to build up any real depth, we're gonna to have to require a few layers. I will use super glue to stick this cork down, although do be careful, the cork sheet is quite porous and you will end up sticking your fingers to it if you aren't careful. I'll also add a few cork bark chips around the base just to give the impression of some larger loose rocks. Again, these I'll stick down with super glue. Now to add the mud and the dirt, I will turn to one of my absolute favorite products, the AK Interactive Muddy Ground. A product designed for diorama building, this gives a super realistic muddy texture and is considerably better value than the Games Workshop texture paints. I'll use quite a lot of this product and spread it around the blank areas of the base using a texture spreader. I'm also gonna shape certain areas of this to provide me with little indents or ridges where I can place some puddles later on. If you haven't already got a texture spreader like this, then I do really wholeheartedly suggest it. They're not expensive, and to be honest, this has turned into probably one of my most used tools. Now this product does take some time to cure fully, so whilst it is still fairly wet, we're gonna add just a few more bits. Firstly, grabbing out some of the larger stones from a pot of Geek Gaming Scenic's base ready, I'll build up a few more loose rocks. Then I'm gonna sprinkle some fairly fine grain modeling sand over all those muddy areas. This will provide a little bit more interest as whilst the muddy ground is a great product, it can look a little bit flat when used over a wide area. Just try and be sparing here. You're looking to add a bit more interest, not to completely cover it up. A final addition of a few skulls from the Games Workshop Skulls box will give us some more interest into that dirt. And later on when some paint is going on, they're also gonna help us get a little bit more contrast. As the muddy ground is still drying at this point, we can just push these into the product and it will hold them when it sets. If you leave it too long though, you will have to glue them down instead. Now it's time to let that muddy ground cure properly. So whilst it's working its magic, let's get that cork to no longer actually look like cork. The first step for this is to grab out some of the Martian Iron Earth Texture Paint by Citadel and apply a pretty generous coating all over the top of that rocky outcrop. Other crackle paints will work, but this is just the one I had handy. When using a crackle paint like this, it's important to get a nice thick coating, as the thicker it's gonna be, is the better it will crack. To break up the effect a little, I'm also gonna apply some patches of Astro Granite debris, which will provide a few piles of rocks and rubble on top of that outcrop. Now, this is definitely not looking like cork anymore. Once that muddy ground has fully cured, it's time to add some more texture, and I'm going to do that by adding in some grass flock. Applying some patches of PVA glue on some of the flatter sections around the base, I'll grab some static grass and gently push this onto those areas. Whilst a static grass applicator would probably be better, 
We are about to give this a full coating of primer and multiple layers of paint, which does have a bit of a habit of flattening it all down. So applying it in this manner is no real issue. For some longer grassy areas, I'm gonna be using some grass tufts from Gamers Grass. I'll mostly apply these to the areas where there is already some grass and a little bit of PVA glue should again be sufficient to stick them down. Now that is the base fully constructed and hopefully everything is now dry. To prime the base, I'll be using the Vallejo Black Surface Primer through my airbrush. Rattle can primer will be perfectly sufficient for this as well, but as it is winter time over here in the UK, it's all a bit cold and a bit damp for that. Once the base is fully primed and it has had a little bit of time to dry, I'll return with the airbrush, but this time loaded with a little bit of Liquitex white ink. Using this ink, I will very slowly work it over some of the larger rocks and then over that rocky outcrop. It's really important to maintain good trigger control on your airbrush here as you do not want to be applying too much at once. As it applies in a translucent layer, it is very easy to slowly build it up and it will give you a nice range of different grey tones. Now, it's all a bit monotone at the moment, so I definitely need to add some colour and to start this off, I'll pop some Citadel Lauren Forest into the airbrush and apply this to all of those grassy areas. It's perfectly fine to let this spill over on some of those muddy areas too, so you can be a little bit faster and looser with how you apply this. If you don't own an airbrush, then this can be applied using a normal brush, but I would try and apply using stippling motions and try not to lay the paint down too thickly, as if you apply layers that are too opaque, it can get a bit overpowering. Now it's definitely looking nice and interesting, but at the moment it may be grim, but it certainly isn't dark. The rocks have caused the base to look very bright, so we're gonna need to darken this back down again. To do this, I'll apply a nice thick coating of Agrax Earth Shade across the entire base. Not only will this darken everything down, but it'll also add in some nice brown tones to the mud and to the rocky areas. I have used Agrax Earthshade as it really does this job very well, but it is pretty expensive and you will go through quite a large amount of it, certainly if you're doing a lot of these bases. With something like this, it may be worth having a look at alternative products if you want to keep your costs down a bit. For the skulls, I'm going to keep it super simple and just give them a coat of Rakar Flesh and then just a simple wash with Agrax Earthshade again. I don't want to spend too much time working on these as they are there to complement the base rather than to draw too much attention. To make these rocks stand out just a little bit more, I'm going to take some Citadel Dawnstone and dry brush this gently onto them. For this I'm going to use a flat dry brush as this is generally better at picking out all those sharp edges and that's what I want for this rocky texture. Now it's time to fill in the recesses that I made for those puddles and for this I'm going to use some of the Green Stuff World UV resin. Mixing this resin in with a little bit of streaking grime can create a nice real muddy looking water. To apply this to all of those little recesses that I made I'll use a pretty old and battered brush. It's very important that you don't use any brush that you care about in the slightest as the combination of the enamel and the resin is pretty much guaranteed to ruin your bristles. Once the resin has all been applied, then it's time to cure it. And to do this, I'll use a small UV torch. In the small quantities that I've used here, you'll only need a few seconds per puddle to get it to cure. But I always tend to make sure, so we'll spend a little while making sure that they are properly set. With all the puddles done, we could probably call it here, but I wanna go for just a little bit more realism. And using some of the MIG wet effects, I'll apply this sparingly around all of those puddles and in a few strategic areas around the base. This will give all those areas the impression of being wet, just as the area around these puddles should be. Then as a final finishing touch, the base will get a nice black base ring.
and we are done. We now have a nice, realistic, but super creepy grimdark wasteland base. With the addition of some bits like tree roots, you can also use this technique to quite easily make a creepy woodland style base as well. This basin style works great for my Slanesh Demons army, as it is interesting, but it's pretty complementary to the scheme, so it doesn't take away from those lovely eye-catching skin tones. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, then please hit that subscribe button down below and feel free to share it to any friends that you think might be interested. I've included some links down in the description below for some of the products that I've used during this tutorial. They are affiliate links with the awesome guys over at Element Games, so any purchases made through those links will provide a little bit of a kickback to the channel just to help me cover the running costs. And remember guys, if all else fails, spray it black and start again.